Interesting matchup here. It is double base day. Got a great suggestion from a viewer. Rock Hill Farms from Buffalo Trace, 100 proof, said to be around seven, eight years old. Really hard to find. Usually when you do find these, they're either on secondary market or uh, at stores for a huge, huge markup. Its competition is the Heaven Hill seven year bottled in bond. Nice big seven year old age statement. So if you were to do this comparison, even though the Rock Hill Farms is not considered bottled in bond, they said the results were very interesting. Let's find out right here on the Mash and Drum. What's up, folks? Welcome back to the Master Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C, and welcome to another edition of Double Bass, a series where I take two whiskeys, put them head to head to see which one comes out on top. I love these matchups when we put something highly allocated against something that's a little bit more readily available. So, first off, we have Rock Hill Farm single barrel. This is uh, from Buffalo Trace, Mashable 2, so same lineup as Hancock's. Blends, Elmer T. Lee, and all those great bourbons that nobody is ever able to find. But uh, this is said to be about seven, eight years old, but like a lot of Buffalo Trace stuff, we're not sure if it's gotten a little bit younger with the demand, but we'll see uh, how it stacks up. Its competition is a uh, kind of a controversial bottle when it first came out. The Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond, which uh, replaced the beloved Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond six year that you should, used to be able to get for about, I don't know, 14, 15 bucks. So this was the re-release several years ago with a new label, uh, one year higher age statement than that bottle, and the price went up to about 40, 45 bucks. So people weren't too happy about that, including myself, but it's one of those bottles I think I've grown to appreciate a little bit more over time. So let's see how it does in this double base matchup. So that is today's matchup, but before we get into the head-to-head -head matchup, let's make a bourbon cocktail with today's sponsor, Shaker and Spoon. I am loving these bourbon cocktails from Shaker and Spoon. Uh, Shaker and Spoon is the must-have cocktail subscription service that teaches you to make high-end, bar-quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. Each of these boxes get built around one singular spirit, which includes all the ingredients, other than the alcohol, for about 12 cocktails, three recipes total, about four cocktails from each recipe. This one is centered around bourbon, everything you need, syrups, bitters, garnishes, and specialty syrups that all come inside, all made in-house. If you're a novice at making cocktails, have no fear, in the box you get these recipe cards that guide you through step-by-step -step crafting each cocktail in super great detail. The glassware you need, I'm telling you, anyone can make and enjoy these high-end cocktails. Let's make the next bourbon cocktail called the Kalusa Hachi. All right, so I already have two ounces of my bourbon in the glass, let's do it. Lemongrass ginger lemon syrup. It smells delicious. All right, that's going right in there, half an ounce. Two dashes, not drops of these smoked orange bitters. One, two. Then lastly, two ounces of this fresh, sparkling orange refresher. Next, add some crushed ice, with a quick stir, a tiny cocktail umbrella. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. Man, that just like takes you back to summer. The orange, you get the smoke orange in there a little bit too. And then I think the thing that makes it, it's this lemongrass ginger lemon syrup. It absolutely takes it to another level. All right, so quick recap. Shaker and Spoon will send these boxes to you with everything you need other than the alcohol. Each box has three recipes with enough ingredients for 12 total cocktails. To get them, click the link below in the description and use the code MASH and DRUM at checkout for $20 off your first box. Now go order your first box and enjoy these amazing cocktails. Cheers. All right, guys, so I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is rate this from one to five in three categories, nose, palate, and finish. Uh, we'll see which uh, score at the end wins. I'm going to try to do this again with little to no editing. So, all right, I'm going to call this one A. Let's call this one B. Let's start with A. Here we go. Wow, that's just pure oak and vanilla. I mean, there's no real way around it. Good spice on the nose, it seems. Not getting much, a little bit of uh, chocolate. Now, a big difference between these two bottles, which I do want to just kind of say, is that the uh, Rock Hill Farms has been open for quite a while, and the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond, that's a fresh crack. So we'll see if that plays into the competition here. All right, let's go to B. Man, strawberry. This is a lot sweeter on the nose. Let's go back here. A little bit more oaky and darker on A. Go to B. 
my goodness, this bee is just like cotton candy in glass. Hmm. Man, which one do I like more? It's a nice contrast between light flavors and dark flavors. A, it's got a little bit more oak, a little bit more oak char, some chocolate, a little bit of um, a peanut buttery vibe. Then you have B, which is just a ton of, my God, that is so sweet. This is just like, it's like a glazed donut, like a glazed jelly, strawberry jelly donut in a glass. I feel like the bourbon guy in me wants to pick A because I like the darker flavors, but the fat kid in me wants to pick B because it just smells like a friggin' donut. Oh my gosh. All right, I mean, both noses are actually really nice. I don't know if I really like one or the other. They're completely different. So I'll just kind of go this down the middle here. I'll give uh, I'll give a I'll give a 3.5 to each of them, just because they are so completely different, but both equally you know kind of good. It's gonna come down to palate and finish. It looks like guys. So let's go to A. Good spice. This kind of matches the nose. Good spice. Good oak. Good oak char. Nice little finish on the back end of that. Again, just a really nice profile of oak, vanilla, little caramel, getting a little bit of like a like a pecan note in there too. Little hint of like pecan pie. You know, both of these are 100 proof and this is drinking a little bit lighter than 100 proof almost. But then once it hits the finish, I know I know it got a great finish, kind of keep finish out of it, but it is part of the palette. I know it just gives you like this nice little lingering spice on the back end of a uh, letter A here. Yeah, I'm really digging like that pecan pie note in it, which is really nice. All right, give myself a second. All right, coming back. Let's go to uh, let's go to the super sweet glazed donut and see if that one makes sense here on the palate. Hmm. It is still very sweet. It's extremely like cherry. Um, man, how would I even explain that? Yeah, it's like, I'm not going to say it's like medicinal cherry, like cherry cough syrup or anything, but it's, it's like cherry extract, like cherry bitters almost. It's got a slight astringency on the back end of it too, like a little bit of an alcohol, you know, punch, which I'm really not getting an A. Man, these are completely different whiskeys, two completely different bourbons. This is just so just, it's like drinking Hawaiian punch. It's got this, like these super bright fruit flavors that I, you know, I, I can't remember ever having in a, a bourbon or especially these two. I mean, I think I know what, what either of these are just because, you know, I've had these before, but if this is the one I think it is, wow. Yeah, it's, it literally reminds me of how Hawaiian punch, that's, I've never, that's crazy. Love this. Okay. You know, I might have to go with A on the palette. I just like how dark it is. I like the richness of it. I like the finish of it. B just has, I don't know. It's got that punch of sweet and like Hawaiian punch, but not much after that. And this one's really bringing a nice, just, I think this one is even, uh, has a little bit more texture to it than B. I'm gonna give the palette to A. I think palette I'm gonna give I don't know if I would give it a, a four. It's not that impressive. Maybe I'll go a little bit of an uptick over uh, 
you know, over 3.5. Maybe I'll give that a 3 point, you know, let's go 3.8 on that. And the palette on B, Yeah, it's coming off that, it's thinner. I'm just gonna give the palette on that one a three. I don't really think it's, it's good, it's got good flavors, but it's thin. All right, lastly is finish, and I already think I know what's winning finish. I think A clearly has a an advantage with finish because it's just, it's got this little bit of a lingering spice, which I really like. B has a finish too, but it's got this little shot of it, of astringency that I'm just not digging. It's it's not bitter, but whereas A gives you a little bit more flavor on the finish, spice, flavor, a little more of that oak char comes in, that pecan pie note, which I really like. B gives you, still, just kind of stays cherry and just gives you kind of the, um, that, uh, like that, that astringency I was talking about. A little bit of like an alcohol burn, alcohol flavor, which you don't really want. But man, that is sweet. Yeah, almost cloyingly sweet, but. All right, I'm gonna give finish. Actually, I don't even really think I need to do the math. I just think just in my head here, I could figure that A has won the matchup. Let's see what A is. Now, just going off a of flavor profile, what I know of both of these, I think A is the Heaven Hill, and I think B is the uh, the Rock Hill Farms. So, see if I was right. And nailed it. Heaven Hill, seven year, which I haven't had in a while. Takes down the Rock Hill Farms. This was an interesting comparison, but I think they're so different. It, it's it was it was kind of easy to pick it out. I think uh, the Heaven Hill. Definitely has you more of that that peanut buttery nutty profile that pecan pie I was getting a little bit more of a of a caramel dark oak you know flavor profile whereas the Rock Hill Farms, I mean that was Buffalo Trace to like the the max cherry sweet powdered sugar glazed donut all of it and uh, I think it just really depends on what your palate likes if you like all those sweeter profiles uh, I do like the Rock Hill. now now granted the Rock Hill Farms are single barrels. So when you do buy each one, it's chances are it could be a lot different than the one I have. Problem is that you just don't see these very often. There are a lot of single barrels I would put against this that I think could over, you know, overtake it. Uh, but people go crazy because Rock Hill Farms is so allocated and so hard to get that people pay exorbitant amounts of money to get this. And I just don't think it's worth it. But yeah, great idea on this head to head. I like the, again, the idea of uh, highly allocated versus something a little bit more accessible. 40 bucks versus you'll be lucky if you find this under 400 bucks in some places. So yeah, Heaven Hill, seven year all the way. So before we go, let's do a little blend here. Let's see if that uh, that Rock Hill Farms can mesh with the Heaven Hill, oh, Rock Hill Farms and Heaven Hill. Hmm, how do we do that? What are we gonna call this blend? Let's just call it Rock Hill Heaven. All right, we're gonna let that sit. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this double base episode. We put Rock Hill Farms single barrel 100 proof versus the Heaven Hill seven year bottle and bond 100 proof. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, hit the subscribe button below, please hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. If you have a suggestion like this viewer did on a fun and interesting uh, double bass, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your ideas. Let's find let's 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 see how this worked out here. Let's find out how Rock Hill Heaven tastes. You know what? That's actually not bad. I think the dark fruit note that's missing in Heaven Hill, Bottle and Bond, actually got added from the uh, Rock Hill Farm. So Rock Hill Heaven is not a bad blend. Maybe the proportions need to be played with a little bit. I'm gonna mess with that one a little bit. Rock Hill Heaven. Cheers guys, thanks for watching the Mass and Drum. See you next week. Cheers.